Welcome back to the fourth and final session focused on Samurai Wallet, a free and open source non-custodial Bitcoin wallet. My name is Brother Rabbit, and I'm again joined by Bitcoin Q&A. Today, we're rounding off the series with giving you an overview of Dojo, the full Bitcoin node implementation to back your Samurai Wallet. If you haven't yet taken the steps to run your own node, we're hoping to provide you with the information you need to get started. Hopefully by now you're familiar with Samurai Wallet and its privacy focused functions, spend tools, and zero link coin join ability using Whirlpool. Well, running your own dojo is the final step for those wishing to not only become their own bank, but protect your privacy when doing so. I'm really looking forward to this one. Bitcoin Q&A, how are you doing? Hey brother, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I've got a distinct sense of deja vu though. We had uh, we we're gonna have to come clean and uh, own up that we had some <laughs> we we had some uh, technical issues to recording the live stream, and unfortunately, my computer decided that it wanted to um, not record your audio. So here we are in post production, going through it all over again. Oh, no problem, no problem. Well, hopefully, we'll, hopefully, we'll get a few things right this time, hey. <laughs> fingers crossed fingers crossed at least we don't have to uh to uh keep an eye on the troll box as well yeah so this one's just just for the uh just for those listening back via uh, uh samurai wallet youtube and uh, bitcoin tv so welcome yes indeed <laughs> yep yep pleasure to be back once again um <clears throat> so i'll just give a, a quick recap as to as to the aim for these um these four sessions this one being the last one uh, so brother rabbit and i are hoping to take you back to basics have a, a really sort of new user focused look at the samurai ecosystem uh, we're going to cover what we have covered uh, samurai wallet uh, sentinel watch only wallet the privacy preserving spend tools within samurai wallet uh, last week we covered whirlpool and today we're going to be covering uh, dojo So just a quick recap, uh, a little bit more in depth on what we covered last week, in case you missed it. Um, as I said, we were talking about Whirlpool, the coin journal implementation from the Samurai Wallet developer team. Um, so we covered off in-depth look at the different pools and the fees uh, involved with those different pools. Uh, we sort of taught you through some tips as to how you might pick the uh, correct pool uh, based on your sort of mixed configurations. Uh, we talked about what Doxic changes and how you might be able to deal with that. Um, then we moved on to talk about Postmix, the different um, one of the final accounts within the sort of Whirlpool section of the wallet, um, and then we t talked you through the different ways in which you can use Whirlpool, namely mobile mixing, the desktop GUI, and then the sort of ultimate, the pinnacle of the stack, the Whirlpool CLI. So what with the uh, you know the Whirlpool CLI, um, as we described in the Whirlpool session, running on your uh, node. Um, there's sort of like a, a natural flow from using Samurai Wallet, from uh, using your uh, your mobile phone to get started, and you know being the OG and getting to running your own dojo. So this session being focused on dojo, uh, we'll talk you through uh, what it is. Uh, so for example, um, dojo is the uh, the Samurai Wallet backend server. So it is the Samurai Wallet node implementation um, specific um, to Samurai Wallet, uh, and it and it acts as um, you know your your own node and uh, it's free and open source just like samurai wallet is and uh, using your own dojo you can follow your own bitcoin rule set um so you can you know you can verify all your own incoming transactions because your your wallet is connected to your own node um you don't have to trust any third parties um so today if you're using samurai wallets um without your own dojo you are using somebody else's dojo, uh, that being Samurai Wallets, um, what we call the Samurai Servers. So by running your own dojo, you've got like a little a little box sitting at home, if you like, um, or you're running it on a computer, and you're 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 verifying all your 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 transactions uh, through through your own uh, your own node without any third parties. Uh, Dojo um, is Tor by default. So what does that mean? That means that the communication from your, um, your Samurai Wallet app to your Dojo is all routed over Tor. Uh, and uh, it's a, a, you know, a Dojo sitting on the network that is um, yeah, connect <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm getting in the weeds here. But the, yeah, ultimately, your, 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 your Samurai Wallet is interacting with your Dojo over Tor, uh, which is good for privacy. Um, also, another benefit for, for your Dojo running on Tor is that you means you can access it from anywhere. So 
say you're running your your dojo node at home uh, you're out and about well you you can connect back to your dojo over tour you don't really have to think about it too much because it's all done for you within the samurai wallet app but this means you know you can send and receive transactions while out and about um, and also uh, you can also if, if you wish to do so um, you can uh, log into the uh, the maintenance tool on a tour browser app and you can check the status of your dojo Cool. So that was a, a good sort of high level look at some of the, the reasons that you might that you might <clears throat> want to run a dojo. Um, the next couple of slides are going to give you a bit more of an in-depth look as to the individual be benefits. Uh, and we've kind of split them up into different categories to sort of spell out why um, having your own dojo and being able to, to use one um, might give you some benefit. So the first category is privacy. Um, so no XPUB sharing. So what does that mean? That means uh, by default, when you da download Samurai Wallet, um, you um, have to share um, the sort of view only key to your Samurai wallet with the Samurai servers so that your wallet knows when it receives uh, transactions and also so that it can send transactions. Um, as Brother Rabbit just said, that's all done over Tor, so um, there is no way that you can be personally identified by doing this, um, but it it may be within some people's threat models that they might not want to share any of that information at all. So by having your own dojo, you don't have to share that XPUB information with anybody um, apart from yourself. Um, again, going back to the, the tour thing that Brother Rabbit um, covered off just a second ago, um, obviously there, there are no IP addresses uh, on tour. Uh, those, those are all completely masked. Um, and your IP address can actually be linked to um, your sort of physical location. Um, so by having it run over Tor um, and connected to your, your own sort of uh, Tor connected dojo, you're not leaking your IP address to anybody. Uh, and finally, um, by having your own dojo, you can query any transactions in a very private manner. Like they might be your own transactions. You might want to see where they are in the, in the sort of queue to be processed, known as the mempool or you might want to just take a look back at some historical transactions that you've made. Uh, if you were to do that using somebody else's dojo, um, you may uh, be able to link, leak certain metadata that might be, might be used to de-anonymize you uh, now or in the future. By doing that with your own dojo, um, you can do this really privately. So the second category is trustless. Um, so by having your own dojo, you can send Bitcoin to anybody on the network without having to trust any third parties. That's all processed via your own dojo directly out to all of the other nodes in the network. No trusted third parties involved. Uh, the next one, you can verify your incoming transactions. Um, now, this, this is one that sort of crops people up um, where they ask how they can verify their own transactions. Well, in actual fact, um, just by having your Samurai wallet backed by your own dojo, the very nature of uh, you receiving a transaction through that setup uh, is verifying your transactions. Your dojo will do that um, based on the rule set that is implemented by the software when you install it. Uh, there's no sort of uh, physical steps required to be taken from you to do this. Um, it's just a case of if you receive a transaction um, and your node accepts it, then it's verified and it plays by the Bitcoin rule set. Um, and the converse of that, obviously, is that your node is kind of your dojo is always um, if it receives somebody tries to send you an invalid transaction, uh, that will be immediately rejected. Um, and the likelihood is you won't even see it in your wallet because it doesn't meet the rule set. Which brings us on to number three, the rule set. Um, so you can vote with your feet. So if in the unlikely event that uh, the Bitcoin network has a sort of consensus split by running your own dojo and backing your Samurai wallet with your own dojo, uh, if the software that is currently running on dojo um, follows the sort of split in the network that you don't agree with, you can um, vote with your feet and move to, say, the other the other. Um, fork in the network so that you can um, follow the rule set that you want to whereas if you were just using samurai wallet as a sort of a, a light client uh, connecting to the samurai servers then you wouldn't have any say in that you'd have to follow uh, the decision uh, that the person running that server uh, was taken and what sort of which, which network they followed 
Um, and, and finally, yep, yeah, you can run the ch run the code that you choose. So this this kind of all encompassing of what I've just said, really. Um, if there are any changes uh, to the sort of Dojo code base that you don't agree with, uh, you can uh, you're free to to change that at any time that you like. Like Brother Rabbit said earlier, it's free and open source. Um, and you can sort of point that to whichever sort of area of the network you like to make sure that it's following the rules that you yourself um, want to follow. So moving on to uh, the fourth reason why you might like to run your own dojo is uh, one we've called ideology. So, um, you know, Bitcoin in its very nature is a decentralized network and um, by you running your own node, um, you might feel like it's important to, to maintain that decentralization of the network. Um, you know, the more nodes that, that are, are running around the world, for example, you know, uh, the, the more difficult it is for, for um, anybody to sort of sense a Bitcoin or, or you know, completely, completely <laughs> remove it, you know, control or delete it. Um, so, you know, the more copies of the blockchain that are, are distributed, um, the stronger the network. Uh, also, you know, uh, if you're running your own node, say, you know, uh, I think that it's we, we can sort of we can certainly say that running your own node is a, is a little bit more sort of uh, be a little bit more technically minded, perhaps, although it's certainly getting easier. Um, but, you know, for, for some people, um, it might just be a hurdle too far. So, um, you know, you can be. Uh, what's referred to as Uncle Jim, you know, so if you're running your own dojo, um, it's possible for uh, friends and family to, if they've got samurai wallets, um, they can connect to your node. So um, it, it should they trust you with that sort of element of privacy? Um, that's, uh, you know, you could argue a, a uh, better for your privacy than your family and friends connecting to the samurai servers or any other third party you know there's a you could sort of there's a bit of local trust there involved um and uh, you know so it's sort of um you can you can help them help them out with any sort of questions so to speak um number five uh, remixes so the beautiful thing about uh, dojo and samurai wallet is that um, on your node, as we, we spoke about in uh, week three during the Whirlpool session, um, you can run on your dojo something called Whirlpool CLI. And what this basically means is that um, because your dojo is always on, uh, your dojo takes takes care of your, uh, your free um, Whirlpool remixes. Uh, and, you know, that makes your, uh, your Bitcoin, your UTXOs that are sitting in your a post mix wallet of the uh, area of samurai wallet uh, illegible to be remixed um, uh, or selected at random and remixed um, so that helps to sort of uh, grow the the post mix whirlpool uh, liquidity pool because you know your your utxos are sort of still sat in whirlpool all the time waiting to to sort of help other people out that's the sort of the, the how um uh, whirlpool works is that you know you when your utxos are sitting in there not only are you providing um other people with um an, an element of um uh sort of better anonymity uh, and privacy for, for in terms of their their utxos that have gone into whirlpool but you're also getting that privacy ben benefit yourself so everybody's a winner uh sixth sixth reason why you you might choose to run a a, a dojo is sort of with, with branded education, you know. So today you might have, um, be, you might be familiar with uh, how Bitcoin works to a certain extent. You know, you might have dabbled with using uh, various forms of wallets, but you know, running your own node really helps you get into the sort of the weeds of how things work. If you choose, if you choose to do so, um, you know, certainly running your own node, you you might explore a little bit more about what the mempool is about and how um, you know transactions are, are sat there waiting to be confirmed into a block, um, and these are all sort of things that perhaps you didn't really consider too much prior to running a node. Um, but, you know, when, when you've got um, your node dashboard up in front of you, it can give you that sort of information and you can start to ask questions uh, as to, you know, how things, uh, how things work a little bit more. Um, and, you know, with, with that, you know, you, you, you can pass this information on to others and, and, you know, sort of become, Become somewhat of a you know, um, you know helpful in the samurai community if that's something you wish to do so, um, but you know personally speaking, um, it was only it was only after I sort of started to run my own node did I start to sort of really understand exactly what is going on, how it works, and um, 
you know you know personally speaking i wouldn't say i'm I'm ever you know too technical but it's just that you know when you start to do these things and build up uh, an element of um sort of information and knowledge you know you, you get things get better over time so um q's put a quote on the slides called, you know standing on the shoulders of giants which is you know quite pertinent if I, is there anything I've, we've missed there q if you'd like to jump back on no i think you covered it just kind of want to echo really the the the, the final bit about education uh completely echo what you said about um definitely you know um something that made me realize how the all of the pieces fit together in terms of uh, what a wallet's role is and what a node's role is in terms of the network and in terms of your own interaction with bitcoin and um, definitely um you know I'll, I'll be honest it hasn't been plain sailing from day one uh, there's a there's a little bit of hedge scratching going on but that's all part of the journey and part of the process of um uh, getting to a, a, a position where you're comfortable with this technology um and able to sort of, well, as the slide says, pass it on to others. Yeah, certainly, and with some of the some of the node implementations, which which um, have have Dojo packaged within them, you know, some are uh, are more technical than others, aren't they? Um, as to sort of how how deep you want to go. So if you, if you choose to want to maybe go a little bit further down the rabbit hole then then that's certainly possible but if you want to only just you know use dojo at a high level just to for all the sort of privacy reasons let's say then you can do that too yeah absolutely so we've we've covered off a load of the the positives or the benefits that you get from running your own dojo uh, there are some considerations that you need to take into account um, before running one um, just so we don't paint it all as uh, as rainbows and, and posies um, so the first one is network bandwidth um, when you initially download the a copy of the blockchain, which is essentially a copy of every single transaction that's ever taken place on the Bitcoin network, that is running at currently 400 gigabytes. Um, depending on your hardware um, and of course your network speed, that's gonna take you anywhere between um, a day or two um, and five to six days. Uh, and you also have to consider the, you know, if you're on a metered um, internet connection, uh, your ISP, or your internet provider might not look fondly on you trying to download 400 gigabytes in a week. Um, so something to consider there. Next one is uptime. Um, if you have your Samurai wallet backed by your own dojo and your dojo uh, has some technical issues and you are the other side of the country and you need to send some Bitcoin, then you are not gonna be able to broadcast that transaction to the network. So um, now obviously you're still in control of the private keys and you can still, there, there are ways that you could, if you were in a pinch, send that transaction by using somebody else's node or maybe reverting back to the Samurai servers. However, that's gonna be uh, just a bit of a hurdle that you need to get over. So if you um, just bear in mind the sort of hardware that you're gonna run this on, make sure that it's, it's um, at least somewhat reliable so that you can transact uh, freely uh, and uh, whenever you need, whenever you want to really. Uh, third one we kind of just covered off really in terms of wallet access. You know, if your node is down, uh, you you don't have full access to, to be able to spend your Bitcoin. Um, the fourth one, hardware costs. So uh, we're going to cover this off in detail in a couple of slides, um, the different ways that you can implement Dojo. Uh, and they vary wildly from somewhere you can run it on your, your a computer that you've already got and it'll be absolutely free. Um, all the way up to sort of a plug and play DIY node that might cost sort of $600. dollars um, there are trade-offs of each, which we'll cover off again, um, but there there is some uh, cost to most of the implementations or most of the common implementations that you need to be aware of. Um, you will also need a fixed location for this hardware, so um, it needs to have permanent power, needs to be on all the time, um, and it will need a internet connection, uh, so it'll need to be somewhere close to your router. Uh, we don't normally advise uh, running Dojo through Wi-Fi, uh, which you know the, the connection uh, is not as robust as a wired uh, Ethernet one. Um, so just something to consider there in terms of where you're going to position all of that hardware. Uh, and lastly, you know I alluded to this earlier about um, maybe some head scratching moments uh, and some time spent. If you're new to this, uh, you're going to have to dedicate some hours to to learn the setups. Again, the, there are different ways that you can do this, and they vary in complexity. Um, and there will also be some sort of ongoing maintenance in terms of updates, uh, maybe some troubleshooting if you have any issues. Um, but again, something to consider uh, when you're looking to run your own dojo. So I'll ask you a, a question, Q, before we move on. And uh, you have already had practice at this answer because of uh, obviously this is the second time we are recording. <laughs> uh, 
so I'm sure you have a polished answer, but uh, I'll ask it again. Um, <laughs> is it is it true that um, you're not a, a real Bitcoiner if you don't run your own node? Ooh, he's hit me with a loaded question. Um, there are <laughs> there are some that will say yes, uh, and there was there are some that will say no. Uh, the absolute most sovereign way that you can interact with Bitcoin um, and remove as many trusted third parties as possible is to do so through your own node. Um, that way you are not relying on anybody else. You kind of have a, a direct um, connection to the rest of the Bitcoin network and the permissionless nature of that. Um, if you're not connected to your own node, then the theory goes that whoever's node you are connected to kind of... Um, has you at their mercy in terms of, you know, if they were to switch off their node, you can't transact easily before connecting to a different node. Um, so the utopia is, yes, everybody on the network runs their own node. However, uh, you know, I'm a realist and I, I'm under no illusions that um, some of this stuff might seem a little bit scary. Um, and the ability for everybody to run a node from day one um, is is not feasible. Um, you know, I didn't start running my own node from day one. I, I use Samurai Wallet connected to the Samurai servers um, because it's just that the natural progression, isn't it? You, you don't get so into something that you want to buy a piece of hardware for a couple hundred dollars um, from day one. Uh, you want to try it for free and obviously the wallet is free. Download it on your Android phone and, and get to grips with it. If you start to like it and you want to go a little bit further down the privacy rabbit hole, absolutely follow this video and look into running your own dojo. I think that was a very good answer and i'd sort of just echo that i i don't believe that you're not a true bitcoiner if uh, you don't run your own node you might have various personal reasons as to, as to why and uh and you know we, we will keep our fingers crossed for you um and hope that you you choose to run one in the future i think um, so uh basic features um of dojo so there's uh what's called Bitcoin D on it, which is basically like Bitcoin Core. You might have heard Bitcoin Core um, sort of mentioned in uh, forums or whatnot. That's just, that's like the, the, the node operating uh, sort of blockchain system, if you like, um, that runs on your node. You've also got an indexer. Uh, the simplest way to explain an indexer is like a, um, a catalog of all the transactions that have ever existed. Um, so this helps with um, like querying balances. So uh, when I sort of say querying balances, um, sort of a term that is used, that's done automatically for you, but it's just, it, just know that that is running on your, on your dojo and that when you, you interact with your dojo using your Samurai wallet, it's using the uh, you know the indexer to, to sort of look up or check transactions. Uh, Inbuilt into Dojo, you've got a block explorer as well. So um, we sort of spoke about being you know it's, it's the best way to be self sovereign and not trust third parties and remain private. Well, your block explorer is is really handy for for doing that um, because what you can do is instead of going onto a um, a, a website online and typing in say like a bitcoin transaction id or a bitcoin address to see if um, you know there's been bitcoin sent to that you can do you can query that on your own node on your own dojo because you've got a uh, the, the, the blockchain downloaded onto your own dojo uh, and because you've got the the indexer you you can you can look up your own transactions or you can look up other people's transactions uh, in the most privacy preserving fashion uh, as I alluded, as spoke about before, you've got Whirlpool CLI. We covered that in the Whirlpool session. Uh, I'll just say it again that running Whirlpool CLI on your node allows for your Samurai wallet to, 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 to use uh, you know, free 24-7 remixes so long as your node is turned on. Um, you know, that means you can turn your mobile phone off um, if you so wish, and your node still takes care of your 24-7 uh, Whirlpool remixes. Um, spoken about before as well is... Uh, You've got Tor on your dojo, so all interactions um, to your dojo are over Tor, which is best for privacy. And then packaged within dojo is something called the dojo maintenance tool. Sometimes we refer to it as the DMT. Uh, what that is, is basically like a, a dashboard that allows you to, um, you, can, you can open this dashboard up in Tor browser and you can check the health status of your of your node you know you can look to see whether you know it's fully up to date in terms of the the, the blockchain that it's downloaded etc um, using that dojo maintenance tool as well you can uh, easily pair your uh, your samurai wallets to your node 
by simple use of scanning the QR code. Uh, and that, that sort of that transfers the information to your Samurai wallet of, of you know, how, how it needs to connect to your own node. And then finally, you've got the um, uh, the XPub tool. Um, Q is going to give an overview of this in, in two moments, but uh, what it basically is is um, um, something within the Dojo maintenance tool, which uh, uh, allows you to uh, sort of scan XPubs uh, and check to see if they're being tracked. And uh, this sort of this sort of takes us into, I guess, a little bit more of the um, sort of sort of techie side to dojo delving a little bit deeper into understanding exactly what it's doing and how it works yeah so as brother alluded to going to take you through what dojo maintenance tool is um he quite accurately called it a, a bit of a dashboard for your dojo where you can see in the center of the section here um you can see the statuses of the various parts of the dojo i won't go into all of them uh, it's probably a little bit too technical for this um but it will sort of uh, summarize that it's whether or not the dojo is sort of in sync with the blockchain and it's at the, what's known as the tip of the chain. Um, it, it essentially, it is, does it sort of uh, see the blockchain um, with the same view as the rest of the nodes on the network? Um, you've also got the QR code pairing tab, which as Brother alluded to, you can um, pair your Samurai wallet or any of your friends or family Samurai wallet with a simple scan of a QR code so that they can um, use your dojo. We've got the XPub tool, which again is for um, if you need to do sort of a manual import of somebody else's wallet, uh, if, you, if you want your dojo to sort of um, communicate effectively with, with their Samurai wallet, you might need to do this from time to time to sort of uh, resync things. Uh, that's the same with the address tool, uh, working in exactly the same way, but for individual addresses rather than um, sort of view only uh, XPub for, for like an entire wallet. Um, and the final one uh, is block tree scan. So occasionally, depending on the hardware that you run, um, your dojo may um, sort of get out of sync with the network. Uh, that might be due to a power outage or perhaps a um, just some tech some hardware issues. Uh, block tree scan is a tool where you can sort of uh, tell your dojo to go back over the sort of state of the network so that it can um, just pick up on any transactions that it might have missed um, that might be uh, relevant to your wallet or to any of the wallets that are connected to your dojo. So as mentioned before, you've got your own personal explorer in your dojo. Um, this allows you to query balances. Um, now, the great thing about the Explorer is uh, if you're not sort of too much into command line, like I can hold my hand up and say that I'm not, is what your Explorer is, is um, you access it over over the Tor browser. And it, it's, it's, it's a sort of a graphical user interface um, uh, sort of say version um used for you know in, which interacts with the, the command line of, of of the node so instead of you having to go into the command line and, and and query transactions this is like a nice little interface um you know you might be you, you likely might be familiar with the, the sorts of things that will be displayed on screen such as you can see an example here it's got a, a transaction id and it's showing you a, a transaction here as well we can see that that transaction has one input and two outputs so you know you can query either your own balances or other people's and this is the most private way to to sort of uh, explore transactions and addresses on the Bit bitcoin blockchain you know you might be used to uh, going on to something like uh, mempool.space but remember that's being run on somebody else's node and uh, although i believe you can access mempool.space over the tor network over a dot onion address um, nothing quite beats um, by, quite beats you know looking up transactions um, on your own node so what do you get in the Explorer? You have a, a mempool summary, so it will give you a, um, a summary of all the transactions in your mempool. Um, and that will tell you a sort of estimation of fees as well, as well as how many transactions are waiting to be confirmed, um, what sort of the, the fee rate of the fee environment is at this very moment in time. Um, you know, if, if, you're, if you're looking to save a pinch on fees, you can, you can look at your own mempool summary and look to see what what fees are currently being confirmed and you know you can even see oh well i'm happy to wait a little bit longer and go for a lower fee and it will give you that information on screen uh, as i sort of spoke about before give you all the transaction details um 
and uh, another thing you can do through the explorer if you so wish um, is you can verify the supply uh, the supply of uh, how many bitcoins have been issued we've perhaps all heard that or, or know that uh, there'll only ever be 21 million uh, bitcoins issued um, so you, you can use your explorer uh, to, to to look in you know to, to query that uh, and it'll 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 come back and tell you how many how many bitcoins to date have been issued um and and yeah is there anything i missed there q uh no no i'll just say that uh, you know reference the last point there's nothing quite like uh the feeling that you get when you've done that you know the verification of the supply uh using your own hardware um always puts a smile to my face have you done it uh i did it a while ago a while ago um i think <laughs> i i um yeah it's it's been, it's been a while if i'm if i'm deadly deadly honest uh, but but again it's one of them things that i think that uh once you once you first set up your node you sort of looking to do all these things don't you oh what it feels like a and, right and ver passage doesn't verify it? the supply yeah it's that first one <laughs> you hit enter and you sort of say, oh, and and you're you're checking that on your own node as well, aren't you? So yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's, it's that's that. I think that's the most powerful part part of one, checking one, the supply. Yeah, one thing I will say is that given the the nature of what that command is doing, it's it's essentially totaling up um, the output from all of the transactions that have ever existed uh, on the network. Uh, it can take again, depending on your hardware, it can take sort of between three and six or seven minutes so if you hit the button and you don't see anything immediately don't be alarmed just uh, give it some time nice. right as we've alluded to there are many different flavors of dojo um, and many different ways that you can implement the dojo software so we're just going to give a brief overview of what they are and um, so that you can sort of um, make an educated decision as to which one might sort of uh, suit you best so go from top to bottom We've got uh, the aptly named Vanilla Dojo. Uh, this is the sort of the basic Dojo software that the Samurai Wallet, Wallet developer team, um, they release. Uh, that's designed for Linux and Mac on x86-64, which is basically any normal desktop or laptop. Um, so you can't run Vanilla Dojo on sort of a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi, unfortunately. However, there are, as we'll come on to in a minute, uh, plenty of other solutions for that. So yeah, the application is DIY. Uh, you've got to be um, comfortable getting dirty in the command line for this one. Um, but the payback that you get for that is that the software is absolutely free. Um, and if you've already got a spare laptop or a spare desktop floating around in your house with sufficient hardware, um, with sufficient storage, sorry, to to um, take the 400 gigabyte blockchain, um, then it, it is an absolutely free way for you to get your own dojo. Next down the list, we've got Ronin Dojo. Um, so this uh, piece of software is um, designed for single board computers only. Uh, the the Ronin Dojo team offer uh, a plug and play option, um, which is essentially a box that you can purchase that turns up ready to go. You just plug it into your power and your router at home, and turn it on and off, away it goes to um, sort of start syncing the blockchain. Uh, they also offer a, a, a DIY software where you can go onto their website, um, download the Ronin Dojo software, um, and the way that works is they offer sort of a, a, an easy or a much easier uh, way to implement Dojo on your single board computer. So everything is sort of scripted so that you can kind of, uh, after a couple of commands, uh, just hit the button and away it'll go. Um, and you'll you'll have your own Dojo in a couple of days. Next one is the Noddle. Um, again, that's for a single board computer. The only option that they uh, offer is plug and play. Uh, you can find that on their website. Um, they do run on some more uh, robust hardware, but you obviously you're going to have to pay for that. Um, next up, we have MyNode. Again, runs for a single board computer. Works in a very similar way to Ronin Dojo. They offer a plug and play option and a DIY option, um, both varying in costs, especially the DIY one, DIY one because you can choose your own hardware. So the prices we've included on, on screen there are sort of the uh, the cheaper option, um, but obviously you're at liberty to use whatever hardware um, you'd like. Finally, we have Umbrel. Um, they are predominantly for single board computers, although they do offer an experimental uh, Linux version for desktops, desktops and laptops. Um, we've classified them as a DIY um, because they do not offer any plug and play option. Um, and I think that's it. I've not missed anything off there, my brother, before we move on. 
No, I don't think so. I think um, maybe perhaps now is a good, good time just to highlight that there's a lot of confusion, um, certainly with um, Ronin Dojo having Dojo in its title, isn't it? So um, the it's worth just reiterating that um, Dojo itself, or what, what Q's termed here, Vanilla Dojo, um, is the sort of software which is released by Samurai Wallet developers. And then each of the following implementations or no implementations, they package Dojo within, don't they? Yeah, so they, they sort of package it into a, a, a nicer um, or more polished user interface that might be more palatable for the newcomer uh, that doesn't want to delve as much into the command line. Um, and they all come with other features as well, uh, which I think you're going to cover off briefly in the next slide. So I'll move on. Yeah, let's go to the next one. So from the top of the shop, we'll, we'll go for uh, Dojo or Vanilla Dojo itself first. So uh, as Q said before, it's completely free. Um, and, you know, that, that sort of sort of low barrier to entry. But the con, con there being is, you know, if you're not sort of proficient in, in using command line um, and, you know, it, it all goes well, it all goes well until it doesn't, does it? So if you might be able to sort of get it set up and or working, but when you need to troubleshoot, you know, you, you need to be somewhat competent that, that you're, you're happy to delve back in and, and, and go, go through that sort of method of troubleshooting. Um, uh, next one down, you've got Ronin Dojo. So uh, Ronin Dojo, they sort of pride themselves on being um, laser focused on the Samurai ecosystem. Um, and they also package within their node um, additional privacy tools. Um, so the, the, Ronin Dojo is a node implementation. They advertise, um, you know, they are Samurai Wallet. You, uh, Samurai Wallet, you, the Samurai Wallet node implementation built by Samurai Wallet users. Um, uh, the con to Ronin Dojo is it, it requires, at least at the moment, um, a minimal minimal command line, um, uh, minimal command line to get get up and started. Um, but as Cube said. For uh, he actually mentioned without giving any caveats that there is a, a plug and play version um, of Ronin Dojo on the way, uh, which is soon to hopefully re remove the, the need for users to, to, to use any command line. Although, what I must say is that um, for, for myself, someone not being very proficient in command line, um, it's sort of it is quite easy to get set up on Ronin. Um, next down, you've got a null. Uh, so they sort of brand themselves on high quality hardware um, and. Uh, the, the, with with Noddle, they also package within uh, various other non Dojo related apps. So, uh, if you wanted to, um, you know, run other other nodes, uh, sorry, other uh, wallet softwares backed by your node, that might be an option for you. Um, so, Noddle is probably a little bit more expensive than the others, um, and uh, it's worth saying that because the node packages uh, they sort of rely on. Uh, sort of developers working upstream on software so, so say um, they've packaged in let's say spectre wallet uh, for example well if spectre release the the next update to their wallet um well these node implementations are downstream from that so um these node implementations would then need to update their software to include the most recent version of, of, of Spectre Wallet, if you like. So, um, so with not all, they can be a little bit slow in, in, in updating um, the various sort of software updates um, from, from upstream. Uh, the next two on the list is probably worth uh, sort of somewhat grouping them together because they're very similar, and that's uh, MyNode and Umbral. Um, so they sort of brand themselves on being very simple DIY setup, um, much like Noddle, that, that they have a wide range of non Dojo related apps. Um, and the sort of they've, they've almost sort of suffer from similar cons in that um, they, they can have like reliability issues, particularly when it comes to, to Dojo. Um, but you know, maybe another thing that the, the Umbral prioritizes over um, anything else is sort of a very polished UI. Um, but the unfortunate thing about having sometimes a very polished UI is that it doesn't allow users to sort of troubleshoot and get get deep and dirty into uh, error logs, so to speak. You know, if um, if things go slightly amiss. Um, Q, is there anything you want to highlight on the the, the flavors of Dojo? That, uh, 
And no, um, I think that was a great, you know, you covered everything. Um, the all, all of the different implementations, like you can see on screen, have their pros and their cons. Um, so just do do some homework and sort of um, have a good poke around to see which one's going to work for work best for you. Yeah, certainly. Um, I would say um, make sure you consider the sort of community support or general support uh, available around the different implementations, particularly if you're a new user. And that support can be that can be a lifesaver, especially if you're having some troubleshooting in, um, instances. Um, definitely one to bear in mind. And uh, one one thing that is maybe maybe worth suggesting, although we haven't put it on the slides, is that um, the the varying node implementations that, that package Dojo within. Um, you know, Dojo is is free and open source. Um, some of the the other the node implementations uh, they they have uh, different license types um so you know in the spirit of th this session or being being about um you know free and open source software um it should be noted that you know there is at least one on there that i'm aware of which um doesn't doesn't hold the same license type um as, as, as dojo um you know it's like sort of more proprietary software so you know getting back to being sort of decentralization and that ideology um if that, that's the sort of thing that um you know uh, is important to you it's another thing to sort of do your research on if you want to um, have a look at the the license types and and then um, that, that might also help inform a decision as to which uh, node implementation you like to go for yeah definitely well said um so one of the final slides is i just wanted to sort of demonstrate the the uh, quote-unquote uncle jim model uh that having your own dojo will allow um, so I'm going to start from the left hand side and work my way uh, clockwise. Um, so let's say you've got your own dojo, you've got it all set up, congratulations. Obviously we've alluded to the fact heavily throughout these four sessions that you can connect your Samurai wallet to your own dojo. Um, and you can also connect your Whirlpool CLI to your own dojo as well for those 24-7 remixes. We, you know, we've covered that heavily. What it will also allow is, let's say in this example, your wife has a Samurai wallet. She can connect to the same dojo. She doesn't need her own hardware. Um, hopefully, if she's your wife, then she trusts you um, with her sort of uh, transaction privacy information. Um, and she can also connect her Whirlpool desktop GUI to your dojo so that she can, uh, if she leaves that desktop GUI on, uh, she can benefit from 24-7 remixing um, again benefiting from the privacy of you running your own dojo um, and that sort of process um, or sort of uh, implementation can be expanded out to any number of friends um, to my knowledge I don't know of anybody that's kind of hit a limit yet in terms of how many wallets they've got connected to their dojo um, I'm sure um, the, the specific hardware will have a bearing on this um, but if you're running on a single board computer the likelihood is that um, there aren't enough Samurai Wallet users in your friendship group to make your dojo struggle. Um, so it's just a really neat way, even if it's only temporary, as a way to onboard your friends into the, the Bitcoin and the Samurai ecosystem. Uh, they're off to a good start where they are trusting only you with their transactional information. And then further down the line, if they decide that uh, this is sort of an ecosystem that they want to explore a bit more, um, hopefully you've learned enough that you can help them set up their own dojo as well. Yeah, or well, you might, like me, not have enough friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, to, to, ra to round this off, um, uh, you know, there's some information on, on screen um, here. So sort of dip your toes and have a look around. So there's places you can find um, and ask questions for all the node implementations that we've spoken about today. Um, the, the first link on there is, is the Dojo Telegram um, channel. That is, that is the, the Dojo software released by Samurai Wallet. Um, so that's that tends to be a little bit more technical chat in, in, in that Telegram channel. Um, and then the rest, you've got the rest of the links on screen um, for the other node implementations. You've got Ronin Dojo UI, uh, Noddle.it, uh, MyNode underscore BTC, uh, and you've got the Get Umbral Telegram chat as well. Uh, and then for more information, uh, if you, you want to have a little look around um, the docs.samurai.io, there's some uh, some guides there as well, um, should you wish to sort of do a little bit more delving into uh, what what samurai what you can use samurai for, um, how it works, um, what you can how you can connect it to to, to these things, and um, yeah, go from there.
I think we've made it through uh, unscathed, fingers crossed. I think we have, yeah. I think we we're, have. We're not out of the woods yet. My laptop still we needs to finish, uh, finish processing everything. But <laughs> touch wood, I think we're good. Um, yeah, just want to say thank you for your help yeah, with these, uh, yeah, with these four, um, with these four sessions. Um, and hopefully, those listening or watching um, have got some use out of them, um, and that they can be shared far and wide to help uh, widen that samurai ecosystem. Indeed, thank you, mate. Well, thank you very much for listening. And if you've missed the previous three sessions, they are available for you to watch on the Samurai Wallet YouTube page, as well as BitcoinTV.com. We appreciate your kind feedback over the last couple of weeks. And if you have any suggestions for future sessions, be sure to let us know. You can follow developments and ongoings of Samurai Wallet via Twitter at Samurai Wallet. Reach out for support, ask questions, or join discussions from the Samurai Wallet Telegram chat, t.me slash Samurai Wallet. And you can find more in-depth information on the Samurai Wallet website, samuraiwallet.com. Samurai Wallet is privacy first, with anything else being unacceptable. Upholding a privacy, particularly when transacting on the Bitcoin network, is fundamental to ensuring financial freedom. That, coupled with free and open source software, is a force to be reckoned with. Now, it's up to you to use the tools at your disposal. We hope to see you poolside.